The initial combat was like the first thing that we did for the game. So we had that combat in the game straight away um, before any R went in, before anything went in. And we did iterate on it as we went through. Like the initial process I've had, uh, when you slashed, it was like an instant amount of damage, which as we went further along with development, you kind of, it felt wrong to like, as soon as you press the button, it's doing damage. So we added like a little delay and stuff like that in, which is just something you kind of work out as you go along. The first ideas were kind of, inspired by Zelda and Hyperlight Drifter was a good a good one for it as well because the combat in that is really tight and nice and um, we knew we wanted it to be kind of a fast-paced game whereas Dark Souls is more animation based this is a bit more like fast it's, it's instant like, slashes and then the time that you spend in the animation is after the slashes happen so it feels a bit more reactive than a game like Dark Souls which is all about the weight of your weapons and the way it feels in that way. For us as like a small studio as well and indies, uh, it kind of, it's better for us to just like do stuff that's faster paced and uh, quicker to iterate on like that. The feel of hitting an enemy and connecting with an enemy was there from the start because I feel like without that, no one's going to like the game. So it's one of the most important fundamental things to get right. There were times that we iterated that just to even more enhance it as we went through the game. We also iterated on the difficulty quite a lot through a lot of playtesting. Like normally um, the process with any kind of new enemy or a new boss is like we, Mark will make the initial prototype, send it to me. I will basically complain about how it's far too difficult and um, point out all the moves that I think are just like a bit too unfair. Like this enemy can just like hit you from too far or turn around too quick and stuff like that. And then there's a level of iteration that we go through in this kind of initial phase. I think like all game developers do, we did a bunch of playtesting with our like game developer friends, like local game devs and stuff like that, which is always handy for iteration because even after just the first few months of development, then we're, me and Mark are both way too good at the game to give any kind of objective view on how difficult it is. So you always need fresh hands on it. It was just a few little bits where we needed to kind of smooth it over a bit, like there's a few um, bosses. I think bosses are the main main issue when you're going for difficulty things. Yeah, some of those needed like making it a bit easier basically because they were too difficult. Like Betty is something that a lot of people bounce off as well. people say that's the, one of the harder bosses in the game. At that point it was probably a lot harder because it had a lot more health so it, it just went on for a long time. Having that feedback helps us to kind of smooth over the, the difficulty curve and get it to where we want. But it is something that's still subjective. Like people, some people complain that like the last boss is too difficult for them. It's just something you kind of have to do your best to like get it to how you think it, it is supposed to be. We're going for more of a, a slightly harder Zelda than say uh, a Dark Souls type game. Like it doesn't punish you in the same way that something like Dark Souls does really. Like we try to be liberal with the checkpoint system and like shortcuts and things like that. So, you know, before every boss, you can pretty much just like run straight from the nearest checkpoint and it's isn't too far away or anything. And when you die, you don't lose any of your currency or anything like that. So you can just go and upgrade. We kind of like didn't want to punish people too much for like making a mistake and so it encourages people to go and explore as well because then they're not afraid of like, oh, if I die, I'm just going to respawn at the checkpoint. I'm not going to like lose all my souls and have to go track them down or anything like that.